Section 2.7, using the manipulating formulae and expressions. Um, this is part of my ultimate revision guide to further maths is the algebra section, which is a further maths GCSE, I should say, which is a level two qualification. There's an index button here that will take you to the, uh, the, the index of the algebra section. Um, and there will be some practice questions down here that you can work on after you've had a go at this. So um, there's four questions here. Um, so what we're working through are essentially changing the subject of the formula is mainly what we're doing here, so making the subject of the formula, or something where we're trying to show or prove an identity. So this this um, often has a, an identity sign in here, so this is, is identical to this. So whatever values of x, this is always true. So we're essentially just going to manipulate this to get this. Okay, so have a go at doing these questions, and then, I, then once you've uh, had a go, then watch see if you got them right or you did them the same way as I do. Okay, so make it x subject. So this is a nice straightforward one. Making x the subject means we want to have x equal to this. We've got to manipulate this so that x is on its own and is equal to everything else. So we move everything over to the other side. Now, um, a slight issue with this is it's a minus 3x. That shouldn't be a, a bother. Let's just uh, run it through. So we've got the 5y equals 4 minus 3x. I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing this. I mean, quite often it's, it's nicer if you move the 3x over to this side and make it positive and take the 5y over that side. Uh, we don't have to do that. We can. I'm going to show you an, another little method that's going to give you a few tips for dealing with negatives. Um, so if I just move the 4, so I get 5y minus 4 equals minus 3x. And then I can just divide by um, the minus 3. I could just put that over minus 3, and essentially that would be correct. So I could put it over minus 3, but what I'm going to do is going to get rid of this minus 3. If, if I go through an, an equation and just change all the signs of every term in the equation, so I make this minus 5y plus 4, and I can just make that 3x. So I've changed every sign. So what I've done there is divided or multiplied through by negative 1. And uh, you might want to just rearrange this. Quite often this will be written like this, so that the minus sign is in, inside the, the expression and not on the end. And then we just divide by 3, so we get 4 minus 5y over 3 equals x. So we've got x equals 4 minus 5y over 3. If we'd added the 3 to the other side, taking the 5 over that side, that would have uh, negated us needing having to divide or multiply 3 by negative 1, which often can be better to do. Making y the subject. So now we've got y appearing in two places. So this is a classic... Um, one where we've got to factorise at some point, we need to get y into one place, we need to manipulate it. So we've got 3y plus 7 equals 8xy minus 1. So we still do start the same, we get the y's together, so we've got 3y, I'm going to take away the 8xy over to this side, still got the plus 7, that equals minus 1. Then I'm going to take away the 7, so we've got 3y minus 8xy, take away the 7 from this side, and take it from that side because it's minus 8. Then I'm going to factorise out the y because I want y in one place. So that gives me 3 minus 8x. So I've taken the y out of that bit to leave us with a 3. Taking the y out of that gives the minus 8. And then we can just divide by that whole bracket. So we get minus 8 over 3 minus 8x. Um, we could tidy this up again. We could change the signs. So this is 8. Um, if we can change the signs top and bottom. Um, we get minus 3 plus 8x, and then just rearrange that to get 8x minus 3. They are all the same answer. Um, it doesn't actually matter which one you have. Um, I would quite often just leave it as the first one I came to. It doesn't say it has to be any particular format, so um, any equivalent answer is fine. Making z the subject, so we've got the z on the bottom of a fraction. Um, the usual method for getting rid of a, a something on the bottom of a fraction is to multiply by through by that thing. So if I've got um, this, if I multiply through by, that's not clear. Um, if I multiply through by z, that gives me one plus zx over two y equals zx. Okay, my z's and two is going to look the same, so I'm going to put a little line through that. To show it's a z. Um, and then I multiply through by the 2y, so that goes to, um, that implies that 2y plus zx equals um, 2, when, we, when, we, when we're writing 
I should have written this as xz, not zx. So it's going to be x, y, z. So I'm multiplying by 3 by 2, y, so times a 2, and then I put them in order, x, y, z. And again, I need to put the z's together and then factorize it and divide and stuff. So I've got the 2y there. I take that over to this side, bring all the z's over to this side. So I've got zx minus 2xyz equals minus 2y. Factorize out the z. So I've got x minus 2xy equals 2 minus 2y, and then divide by that. Minus 2y all over x minus 2xy. Like that. And again, we could manipulate negatives, but I'm not going to bother. Okay, and then in this one, um, sh proving and showing or proving identity is just ignore this, the more the simplified version. Start with the more complicated version, which is the two separate fractions. And this is just telling us this is what the answer we've got to get to. So if we start with this, we need to make this first fraction. Um, this this bottom this bottom thing here is clearly where we've done three times five is fifteen. So we multiply those two brackets together. So we've got x. If we make it out of x plus three, x minus five, we need to multiply by x minus five on that fraction. And on this fraction we need to do the same denominator. We have the x minus five on this fraction, so we need to multiply this one by x plus three. So we've got four lots of x plus three. And then we can combine those two together. So we've got the bottom of the, the fraction is x plus 3, x minus 5. And that's going to be this when you multiply it out. And then we've got the top of the fraction, which is just one lot of x minus 5, which is x minus 5, plus four lots of x and four lots of 3. So that gives us x plus 4x is 5x, minus 5 plus 12 is 7. And the bottom. It's going to be just we can just write that out as x squared minus 2x minus 15 and there we have it and this we don't ever we shouldn't write this down this should be what we finish with so we've shown this is manipulated to this which then goes to that which is what we're trying to do okay so when you're trying to, to show something or simplify or prove an identity all you're really trying to do is to combine one side so that it gives you the other side that's a way of knowing you've got the right answer because it's given you the answer already